Hello everyone, in this video I will explain how to solve optimization problems in Python by using SciPy library. Those of you who are my subscribers or who watch my videos know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. So here is the post. This post contains a little bit of theory, contains Python code, and contains all the explanations. And before I start, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time to create this video, and more importantly, a significant amount of energy. Consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. A link to the post can be found in the description below. Okay, so let's start. To explain how to solve optimization problems in Python, we first need to select a test problem. That is, we need to select a problem for which we can compute the analytical solution. So we can compare this analytical solution with the solution that is computed by using an iterative method. In this way, we can truly evaluate the performance and accuracy of the optimization problem. Now, as a test case, we consider the problem of computing the solution of the following system of linear equations. So, equation number one basically defines a linear system of equations where y is a vector with n rows, a is n by n matrix, and x is a vector of n rows. That is, given y and matrix A, we want to compute the vector X. Now, under the assumption that this matrix A is non-singular, we can compute its inverse, and finally, we can compute the solution that is given by this equation number two. So, X hat, where the notation hat denotes the solution, is simply computed as inverse of a multiplying the vector y. Okay, now, the solution of the system of linear equations can also be expressed as the solution of the following least squares optimization problem. So we can minimize with respect to x this cost function over here, where this notation over here is used to denote the vector to norm. As I explained in my previous post, whose link is given here, here is the link and here is the explanation, the solution of the least squares problem is given by the equation number four. So to compute the solution, of this optimization problem over here, we need to compute the matrix pseudo-inverse. That is, we need to compute the pseudo-inverse of A. Now, taking into account the simple rule for computing the inverse of matrix product, we can express this pseudo-inverse as follows. We can basically show that A transpose A inverse multiplying a transpose is equal to inverse of a. And consequently, we conclude that the solution given by this equation number four is actually the same as the solution given by the equation number two. That is this solution over here. So to summarize, we have shown that the solution of this linear system can be found by solving this optimization problem over here. That is, by solving the least squares optimization problem. And this will be our test case. And test the solution will be given by the equation number two. Okay, now let us first formulate the problem in Python. And let us try to solve this problem in Python. So I will click over here and open my spider python environment. I like the spider python environment since it's very convenient and it reminds me of MATLAB. Here I can basically 
evaluate code lines and I can see the results over here and I can see my workspace, for example, by typing who's. Okay, so let us start with the explanation of the Python code. First, I will click over here to remove all, all the variables and I will look to see my workspace. My workspace is completely clean, everything is empty, so I can start with coding. The first step is to import the libraries. I'm importing the NumPy library, the SciPy library, and from SciPy, Optimize, I import Minimize. Then I will define my test problem. That is over here, I will define a random matrix A. So let us evaluate these code lines and see what will happen. And now here is my matrix A. It's a completely random matrix. So I'm constructing a completely random problem. Now, let us choose the true solution X. That is, we choose the value of X over here. That will represent our true solution. And we will choose a random value of this solution. So let us choose our true solution and let's see what will happen. So here is our true solution. It's completely random. Now, for such a true solution, we need to basically compute the right-hand side y, or the vector on the right-hand side. So I will simply propagate my linear equation by multiplying the matrix A by my true solution x, and let's see what is the result. Okay, let us copy and paste this, here's my y, or the right-hand side. The next step is to compute the solution by using the least squares method. So we will compute the solution by using this equation number two. And here's our solution. I basically compute the matrix inverse by using np.linear algebra inverse function, and I multiply my inverse matrix by the vector y. And here is my computed solution. And then I will compute the right-hand side for such a computed solution in order to compute the errors. So I will simply multiply my matrix A by the computed solution x to obtain my right-hand side. Okay, now I have my right-hand side. Now I'm ready to compute the errors. Basically, to quantify the accuracy, we compute the absolute errors. So here is the first error. It's basically the error between our true solution and our basically computed solution. And I need to compute the errors on the right-hand side. Basically, this is the vector y corresponding to the true solution and y hat corresponding to computed solution. And once I have these absolute errors, I can compute my relative errors to quantify the accuracy of the optimization method. So let us compute these two errors, relative and absolute, and let's see what will happen. Okay, let us first look into the absolute error for x. Hmm, good, we see very small values. Excellent, which means that the inverse solution is very close to the our true solution. Let us compute the basically the errors on the right hand side. Let's see what happens. Mm, again, very small numbers. And let us see the relative errors in the solution x. So the relative error is 10 to the minus 16. And let us see the error for the right hand side. So we can see the error for the right-hand side is also 10 to the minus 16. Okay, let us now compute the solution by using an optimization approach. The first step when applying the optimization approach is to define a Python function that will give us the value of the cost function. So going back to my post, here is my cost function. And here is the optimization problem given by the equation number three. So this part over here is the cost function. So we need to define a function that will return the value 
of the cost function for some value of x, that's the first argument, for the A matrix, this is our A matrix defining the problem, and for the right-hand side vector. And we simply code the Euclidean 2 norm squared. We compute the error over here, and return value is nothing less than linear np dot linear algebra norm error comma two comma two denotes the sec second norm or two norm and we square the result and we simply return the value okay so this is the first step when solving optimization problem in python you first need to specify your cost function the next step is to select the initial guess so over here I will need an initial guess and my initial guess will be equal to random number. So let us evaluate this code block and here's my initial guess. The question is why do I need an initial guess and the answer is the following. I'm using an iterative method to solve the optimization problem and consequently this iterative method should be initialized with some value. And this value is given by the value of the initial guess. Okay, so the next step is to basically look into the, all the options for the solver that we are going to use. We are using the function minimize and we're using one of the possibilities for the solution method. We use this Nelder mint method. So let us see possibilities. Basically, we need to specify a dictionary with optimization parameters. These parameters are display type, max iteration, max function evaluations, and some other parameters that I will explain in the sequel. Okay. So just to mention again, this code line is just to use to visualize possibilities for solving the optimization problem. If you want to see another method then it's basically options, you will select or change the value over here. And we finally compute the solution. We compute the solution by using the minimize function. The first argument of the minimize function is the cost function. It's given over here. We just specified the name of the cost function. The second argument is the initial guess. The third argument is the method that we will use. It's Nelder Mead method. And finally, we specify the arguments. And here are the arguments. Basically, these are the arguments that are used in our function, defining the cost function, that they are A matrix and Y vector. And we simply specify them over here. And finally, we specify the dictionary with options. So what are the options over here? We choose the max iteration of 10,000, max function evaluation of 10,000, the solution tolerance, it's 10 to the minus eight, and we finally choose this parameter to be true. This is the display parameter. That is, when we are solving the optimization problem, we wanna see some output. A few comments are important over here. First of all, if you specify a small number of iterations, your solution will end without actually accurately computing the solution. The same is true for max function evaluations. If you select a small number for this parameter, you might obtain the solution that's far away from the true solution. And the third very important parameter is the tolerance for computing the solution. Here I'm choosing 10 to the minus Eight, which is a reasonable tolerance. So let us compute the solution. And here's the display. So optimization terminated successfully. Current function value is close to zero. We have almost 4,000 iterations and we have around 5,500 function evaluation. The function minimize gives as the result this structure over here, result, and we can see some parameters of this structure, their final simplex, which is not important for us. This array here is also not important for us, although it gives probably errors. And the most important parameter is this parameter over here. It's our solution. So to access this solution, we will simply type result 
dot x and we will assign this value to the computed solution and here's our computed solution okay so let us now compare this solution with the previously computed solution let us first visualize it visualize the error or, or visualize both solutions. So this is the computed solution and this is, let's say, our true solution. So let's see the difference. Okay, so let me just transpose this again to see it nicely. And let me type again our computed solution. And we can see that these two solutions are almost identical they're almost the same. Okay, so let us now formally compute the errors. First, we need to compute the right-hand side on the basis of the computed solution. We simply evaluate this code line and then we see the solution errors. Let's see the absolute error in X, the absolute error in Y. So this is the absolute error in X we can see that the values are relatively small. This is the absolute error in Y. Again, the results are small and let us compute the relative errors. Okay, we can see basically that the relative errors are small. Again, the relative error is in, at the order of 10 to the minus nine in the X and the relative error for the right-hand side is, again, in the order of 10 to the minus 10. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like if you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.